So once again, it's been some time since I've sat down and talked to you all here on the channel. In today's video, I want to go through how I shot my short film, tips that I think will make it easier for you when shooting by yourself, and just anything else in general that I think might help if you want to shoot one too. By the way, if you haven't seen my short film, Creatures of Habits, I definitely recommend checking it out before you watch this video already up on my channel. So you might think these tips I'm about to share with you are only if you're shooting by yourself, but they can also be helpful if you're shooting with the crew too. Now let's start with the first tip I have and it's surrounding coming up with the idea. So basically for any ideas that you think of, make sure you write them down. I always use the notes app on my phone just so I can have like basic ideas to remember and not forget. And I even do that for these YouTube videos as well. Writing the idea down as soon as you get it is really important because it can be in your head for one second but then the next moment you can completely forget about it. But I think this also helps because I don't think you should go with the first idea that you come up with. It might be a good start with that first idea but usually you'll come up with better ideas as you continue to develop just like I did with my short film. One of the first ideas I thought of when creating this film was just simply doing a cinematic day in the life video. I want to work on my cinematography and that's what I'm really focusing on right now as I want to become a professional cinematographer. And I also thought it would be more fun to make the ordinary things in life look a bit more interesting than they actually are. But after writing that first idea down, I realized I wanted to do something more with this. And as you can see from the final results, it's actually a mix of multiple ideas that I had all put into one. After you think you have a pretty good idea of what you're trying to tell in your short film, the next step, which I think is the most important one, is pre-production. Now pre-production, I believe, is the most important thing you can do whether you're shooting alone or with a crew. So here is where I take the basic ideas that I wrote in the notes app and move them into Milano so I can visualize it better and see where I'm trying to go with this story. Milano has been really helpful in organizing you know, my ideas and just visualizing what I want this story to be. You can see I pull shot inspiration video references that I want to look back to, anything that I think can help me inspire what I'm trying to create. Here I was able to write out the script and link it to shot ideas that I had or any sequences I wanted for each line to follow. Milano has been really helpful in keeping my thoughts organized and know exactly what I want the story to turn out. But pre-production for me also goes for having a full draft done, you know, coming up with shot lists, location scouting, and also goes as well for watching movies and TV shows you think that can fit into this vision for your short film to find Find, you know more inspirations or shots that you think that can work but in pre-production this is where I would also practice the shots that I want in my story you know see if the lighting works or the composition helps visualize the story the way I want it to and another thing to consider when you're shooting by yourself is that all of your shots are gonna be static shots locked off on a tripod of course if you're gonna be in it but compositions are really important they are really key for telling a good story visually, you know, besides having a good story to tell. Now this next tip can also go with pre-production or like when you're actually shooting, but I think it's really important to keep your gear to a minimum. So this goes for the actual gear that you use, you know, if you just want to stick to one lens and one camera, but it's also if you want to use natural light as your main source of light, so you're not carrying a lot of equipment around when you're actually shooting. So for example, in my short film, I did mostly use natural light or practicals that I had in frame, but I did also use the Aperture B7C light bulb, which really helped as a practical and just adding more ambient lighting in the space that I was in. As well as using this light right here, the Nanlite Pavel Tube 2 foot 15C version, where it helped, you know, mimic natural light when I needed it, or just add more ambient lighting in the space since I was working in, you know, in my room and I don't have a lot of space here. So having a small light like that that's powerful was really incredible to use. It's the perfect size for a light when you need to use it in a small space, but it's also really powerful as well. And the great thing about these two lights as well is that they're not heavy at all and they're pretty small and light, so I can move them around to wherever I need them to be. I could have used the light that I'm using right here, the Aperture 200D with the light dome, but it takes up so much space that, you know, it's really not worth it when I'm using in a small room, you know, here. And I think, you know, these two lights were enough. And to be honest, I really needed as much space as I can get so it didn't look like a mess in frame and I can just clear out what I needed to. But these two lights were definitely enough, including with the natural light that I had. And if I really needed to, I could increase the ISO on the Sony a7 IV to 3200 since that's the second base. But I really didn't think I used that that often, maybe in one or two shots, but everything else was just that 800 ISO with you know, the available light that I had. But once you're set up with pre-production and you feel like you're ready to shoot, well, 
all that's left is to go shoot. So since you really dived into your pre-production and you planned out the shots, you know exactly what you want to get, it makes shooting a whole lot easier than it would have been if you didn't plan. So the important thing to know when you're actually shooting is to be flexible on your shoot days. It can be really helpful to schedule out exactly what you want to do and where, which is exactly what I did, but still anything can happen when you're shooting. And what I mean by that is that just be ready for, you know, any mistakes to happen or like the worst possible outcome, you know, that you can think of when you're shooting could possibly happen, which almost did for me. The important thing to understand when you're shooting is that not everything is going to go as planned. So I'd say be prepared for everything to go wrong. And don't try to have everything perfect. I'm that way where, you know, I'm a perfectionist and I want every shot to be exactly how I thought. And a lot of shots that I wanted didn't even make it into the film or, you know, some shots didn't exactly pan out the way I thought they would. But I think it still turned out to be a great short film that I pulled out. I just say be flexible. Some shots might not work out, which happened to me. And it's just good to have a backup plan of some things you might want to get in case that happens. Now, finally, we're at post-production. Now I feel like I can make a whole video just on this side of filmmaking, you know, with color grading and you know, now since I have a Sony a7 IV, I can make a new video showing how I color grade this, but I'll leave you with a few tips for now. So first off, sound design. That is really important when you're making a short film or any, you know, movie type thing in general. If you're gonna use music, make sure you edit to the music and it fits with the same tone and theme of what you're going for. Sound design is really important in aiding your visuals and your story as well. I mean, just look at this section from my short film to see how sound design really makes a difference, first without it and then with it. I'd say if you can, you should watch my short film with headphones on so you can really hear the sound design and how much work I put into that. So that really helps the visuals and puts the whole story together. Now, another tip I'd say is mess around with aspect ratios as that can really help your story as well. So I went with a 14 by nine aspect ratio for my short film and I knew I wanted to from the start. So that was really helpful in lining up my shots the way I wanted to, to make sure everything that I want viewed in the shot was actually shown. But using different aspect ratios can help tell your story in different ways or give off different emotions or feelings when you're watching it. Like using a one by one or four by three aspect ratio is really different than using a 16 by nine or you know, anamorphic look. You know, using a one by one or four by three can make it feel more claustrophobic as you're watching the film. And I think a perfect example of this is The Lighthouse. Now, I definitely recommend you check out this film with Willem Dafoe and Robert Patterson. I think this is a perfect example of how a different aspect ratio actually helps improve the story it's telling. You know, if the movie didn't use this more squarish aspect ratio and something like 16 by nine, I don't think it would give off the same effect as it does when you watch it in this square format. And then for color grading, in the first half, I went for like cooler tones tones and then the second half I went with warmer tones you know just to give off different feelings of you know being trapped inside and then afterwards being more free and open and you know color grading is just another tool to help you convey your story and you know give off different emotions with different colors and I think those are all the tips that I have for you today there's of course so much more I can say on this topic, but I think these tips are really good for starting out if you want to get into making short films. But if you have any tips, why not leave them down in the comment section below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Writing it down is really important. These cars are ridiculous. New York City.